it is the week four edition of the monster pod here on the lines lines.com joined by connor allen four for four philadelphia eagles and the tampa bay buccaneers this is a point and a half to two points in favor of the eagles on the road against the bucks 42 and a half to 43 is our total we know it is going to be a wide receiver core that is a shell out there for this eagles team which is why we're looking at such a short spread in this one though the bucks are uh, dealing with a bunch of injuries as well steven yeah i feel like the eagles injuries matter more though i mean the bucks injuries definitely matter i mean they lost to the broncos last week and made bo nicks look like a legitimate nfl quarterback with those injuries but the eagles potentially coming in with out their right tackle Lane Johnson without Devonta Smith, their wide receiver too. We got to see about that. Their concussions, so we we never know for sure. Maybe even up and through the weekend. Um, I don't think AJ Brown's going to play again. So that's potentially Jahan Dotson, Johnny Wilson, uh, their number four receiver receiver Britton Covey's not even playing. Who got more targets than I ever would have dreamed he would have gotten in this offense a week ago. So, like, I don't know who they're trotting out there for this passing game. And it looks like Vita Vey is going to play, which is going to make it a little tougher to run the ball, I would think, here. I just think that as we record here on Friday morning, there are a lot worse things you can do than just teasing up the Bucks from one and a half to seven and a half, probably getting some good injury news here as we go along. And if you're watching this and the teaser leg's still not available, I think anything minus 110 or better on the money line for the Bucs just to win this game because I trust their offense and their starters to be able to move the ball more than Jalen Hurts and these backup wide receivers for sure. All right. I can all right, I can get there. I can get there with that, Connor. Um, we see last week and you look at what Philadelphia w- was able to do and I know there was a couple of injuries here and there uh, uh, along the way as the game went on, but Vic Fangio I thought was – dialed up a master class last week against the Saints and I thought it was really really good if you look at the overall defensive numbers for the Eagles they don't jump off the page to you but if you kind of go back and watch a couple of these games like I think he's got them heading in the right direction which kind of gives me pause at least just a little bit as to what I think about this game in general very confusing game the number seems like it's almost bait for you to go and take it with the Eagles um I think I would still play the Eagles if I had to play this one, but uh, we don't have to play them all. So I might just sit this one out. What say you? Yeah, this game is interesting for, I mean, a lot of the reasons you mentioned, I think the injury report, like AJ Brown and Lane Johnson, I would say argue two of the most impactful players in like Mm -hmm. the entire NFC, not just like the Eagles, like the entire, like, you know, the one of the, in the league. And so both of them being out uh, plus Devonta Smith being out, on top of Jalen Hurts really struggling against Todd Bowles' defenses for the last couple of years, like I have a really hard time getting there with the Eagles. Mm-hmm. That being said, I wanted to be down on the Bucks coming into the season anyways. Like their defense, I don't think is all that good. I think their offense is, I don't know, maybe a little overrated. Um, you know, I, I thought that last year was a little, maybe a little bit of a flash in the pan. So for me, I kind of like Eagles team total under 20 and a half, I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. That's like plus money. Uh, you can get tw- under 21 and a half, minus 110. I just don't really see them having too much offensive success here. And I think that their defense, like you mentioned, can maybe slow down the Bucks' offense here a little bit um, enough to the point where this is just kind of like a slow, boring, bad game. Yes. Uh, from Jalen Hurts and company. Cause I mean, we've seen Jalen Hurts without his top guys. It's, it's not always pretty to be honest. Um, he's not, hasn't really been the talent elevator. You know, he's kind of just thrives when he's had a bunch of guys, awesome guys around him and looked great at times, but uh, that's not the situation heading into today. So for me, it's probably a lean on the team total under. I know um, just given what we what we see with this injury situation, I mean, Kalijah Kansi's not going to play for Tampa again. Antoine Winfield's not going to play for them again. You mentioned Vita Vea, Stephen. I, yeah, I mean, he's put in a couple of limited practices, but it is still a, a knee. It's, yeah, yeah, it's still a knee deal. And, and it's so even if he does play, it might like not be a full workload out there. I mean, they're high. The numbers are super high. I might just play some Barkley props on the fact that he's probably going to get like 85% target share. (laughs) Like he's going to be like, he's going to have like 80% usage in this. this Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it could be crazy, crazy usage for Saquon in this game. And so, by the um, way, the other thing with the Bucks, all this Bucky Irving hype this week, uh, midweek downgrade from limited to DMP with a hamstring. So, might be pumping the brakes on Bucky this week, right, Connor? 
Yeah, and the coaching staff. Like, so early in the week, they're like, oh, he's earned more touches, more snaps going forward. And then, like, yesterday, I guess, like, Friday or Thursday, they were like, oh, you know, Rashad's still our starting running back. You know, like, we're still going to see him. So I'm like, all right, well, so it's, I mean, that Bucky Irving season lasted, you know, like six days. Uh, put it on the tombstone, you know? It's like no, these coaches just refuse to put in the more efficient players like this yeah. until they have to, you know, they just won't, they won't do he it. He tore a guy's ACL last week. I mean, I know, I, I know. And like, he stole his ACL and then there's nothing we can do about it. Um, guys, as always, everything we do absolutely free. So please hit that subscribe button. Do appreciate you hanging out. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section, what game stood out to you? What did we miss? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Let's be frank. You're only going to put what you disagree with in there. That's fine. Just tell us what you disagree with and like, tell us that we're idiots and all that. We'll go in. We'll read them for sure. Don't think Steven doesn't go back in the comments because we made a clean sweep on Thursday night when everyone was calling us idiots. And uh, Steven went in there and did a little poking of the bear. So like, you know, it's just a little, little poking of the bear. Yeah. Just a little, little, little poking of the bear in that. Of course, if you have not already go in, check out all the great work Connor and company are doing over at four. Uh, four for four. It is literally not only sports betting, but great fantasy stuff, DFS stuff, and great projection systems that you're going to want to use in your process. So be sure and put that to play over there for Connor. For Steven, I'm Matt. Good luck on all your week four bets.